This is not your average predictions video. Unlike fellow creators, I've analyzed every single official digital SAT, and after noting every trend and pattern in the most repeated question types, I've narrowed it down to four questions you will see on your next SAT. All right, starting off with prediction number one, unit conversion. You're almost guaranteed to see one of these questions as this question type has shown up on every single SAT administered this year, so you need to be able to solve this. Taking a look at the question, an object speed in meters per hour is increasing at a rate of 1530 meters per hour per second. Which of the following is closest to this rate in feet per second squared? So the first step with these problems is writing down the given. The object speed is increasing at a rate of 1530 meters per hour, and all of that is happening every second. And so from reading our problem, we can tell that our end goal is to express this acceleration in the form of feet per second squared. For that to happen, I need one single fraction with my unit on top and time on bottom, which is not how my given is oriented. Right now, I have one unit over the other when I want both of my times I have to be in the denominator. So to get rid of a denominator we don't want, remember that dividing by a unit is the same as multiplying by its reciprocal. We don't want s, so we're going to multiply this entire fraction by 1 over s. This is going to let us combine both units, hours and seconds, and the denominator together. So performing that step is just going to be the numerator times 1 over s, which is going to give me meters divided by hours times seconds. So this is actually how I want to express my given. Next, I want my measurement unit to be in feet not meters. So to convert, I'm going to take the conversion they're telling us to use, which is 1 meter equals 3.28 feet. I have 1530 meters, so I can just multiply that by 3.28 to get me 5018.4 feet over hours times seconds. Now, all we want is for the bottom to become seconds squared. So I'm going to have to convert hours to seconds. And we know that an hour has 3,600 seconds, so I'm just going to rewrite it as 5,018.4 feet divided by 3,600 seconds times seconds. We have two seconds in the denominator multiplied by each other, so that's just going to become 3,600 seconds squared. And then we want feet over seconds squared, so getting rid of all the coefficients, we need to do 5018.4 divided by 3600, which is going to give me 1.39 as my final answer. 1.39 feet per second squared. All right, moving on to question number two, an arc question. This question type is common on the SAT and it hasn't shown up for a couple months, so I do think the August SAT is due for one. Anyway, on to the question. For the given circle, the measure of arc ABC is 130 plus 7x degrees, and the measure of arc ACB is 90 minus 3x degrees. What is the value of x? So first, let's map that out. Arc ABC is going to start at point A and ends at point C, and it must pass through point B. So it's going to wrap around all the way like that. And all that is going to be 130 plus 7x degrees. And then you have arc ACB, which starts at point A and ends at point B, passing through point C. So this is going to wrap around like this, and that's going to give me 90 minus 3x degrees. And then one more thing y'all are going to notice right here is that we have a 35 degree angle right here. And what this is called is it's called an inscribed angle. An inscribed angle is half the measure of the arc it intercepts. And since this angle intercepts arc CB, arc CB is going to be 2 times 35, which is 70. This is a circle theorem. If you don't know these, you have to brush up on them before your next SAT. So now that we've mapped out all of our information, we can recognize that all of the arcs in a circle total 360 degrees. So we can just add up all of these individual arcs and set it equal to that total. So we have arc ABC, which is 130 plus 7x degrees. And then we have arc ACB, which is 90 minus 3x degrees. But arc ACB also contains arc CB, which totals 70 degrees. So we have to subtract this from that total in order to ensure that everything is counted for just once. So that's going to be 130 plus 7x plus 90 minus 3x minus that 70 from arc CB equals 360. 
and then this is from here onward it's just performing basic algebra and once you go ahead and do that you're going to get x is 52.5 all right moving on to question number three an equilateral triangle is inscribed in a circle with a diameter of 16 which of the following gives the area of the equilateral triangle so in order to answer this question the first thing we're going to want to do is actually draw it out so there's my circle and there is my triangle inscribed within the circle I also know that my diameter is 16 so diameter is going to extend from the edge of the circle through the center of the circle all the way to another edge of the circle and that is 16 so now we need to figure out the side lengths of the triangle and the way we're going to do that is through our radius so if you look at this point right here the edge of the triangle perfectly hits the edge of the circle and from here if we look at the center from the center all the way to this point is going to be our radius of 8 and since the triangle perfectly hits the edge of that circle from here to the edge of the triangle is going to have a length of 8 and so using this information what we can do is we can create our own mini little triangle right here and use the 30 60 90 rule to get this length here and then from there get this length so right here we're going to have our 90 degree angle right here is going to be our 30 degree angle and here is going to be our 60 degree angle and as you all know if you don't know you have it on the formula sheet but your hypotenuse is 2x your smallest side is x and your medium side is x root 3 so my smallest side is going to be 4 right here and then i'm going to have 4 root 3 right there but i'm going to add another 4 root 3 to account for the other half and so my triangle has a side length of 8 root 3. <clears throat> so now we got the base. What we need to do next is find the height of the triangle. So to find the height, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another triangle and then use the 30, 60, 90 rule to find the height again. So right here is going to be my 90 degree angle. This is my 60 degree angle and this is my 30 degree angle. So 4 root 3 my height is my hypotenuse is going to be 8 root 3 and then my height is going to be 4 root 3 root 3 which is just going to be 4 times 3 as the root 3s cancel out so I know my height is 12 right now and that's all I need to get my area which is going to be 1 half times base which is 8 root 3 times 12 which is my height when you multiply all of these you're going to find that your answer is going to be d 48 root 3 all right moving on to question number four a trigonometry question this is a heavily repeated topic and question so be sure you know the ins and outs of this before your test in the figure a d and b c intersect at point d the measure of angle a b d is w degrees the measure of angle c a d is c degrees and a d equals 178 if cosine of w equals 9 over 41, what is the value of tan of z? So I've already modeled that right here. A, B, D is going to be w degrees. C, A, D, which is right here, is going to be z degrees. And then A, D is 178. So to start off with this question, a lot of people would try to find the side lengths using the cosine equation that you're given right here. They would try to find the side lengths of A, B, D. But you actually don't need to do all of that. In this case, you're already given the cosine value of the angle. So instead of working forward from the angle of W to get to the ratio of 9 over 41, since you already have the ratio and you just want the angle, you can use inverse trig. So in this case, since arc cosine is the inverse of cosine, it basically undoes the cosine operation. So if I have Cosine of, cosine of w equals 9 over 41, I can actually say that w is going to be the inverse cosine of 9 over 41. And the reason this works is because since cosine and arc cosine are inherently different operations and they're inverse, their outputs and inputs can be switched. So now that I have w equal to this I can just put this into Desmos and then get a value for w so that's just going to be cosine to the power of negative 1 and then 9 over 41 in parentheses but this answer is actually going to be wrong because you are in radian mode and or I am in radian mode and not degrees and this is a mistake a lot of students make they don't know what mode they're in and they end up getting the wrong answer 
So in order to avoid that, just make sure you hit the wrench and then click the right mode. So I want to be in degrees, so once I hit degrees, I actually get the proper degree value for W. So now that you have W, the next step is finding tangent of Z. But actually, you already have the degree value of Z. Z is equal to W, and the reason why is because whenever you have a larger triangle with an altitude dividing it into two smaller triangles, the smaller triangles that make it up automatically become similar. So if I oriented triangle ABD, my smaller triangle, and triangle CAD, my larger triangle, in similar fashions, I can see that angle CAD, where Z lies, corresponds to angle ABD, where W lies. Because these two triangles are similar, Z equals W. So this right here is actually going to be equal to that right there. So tangent of Z would actually just be tangent of W. So what I can do is, since I already have W, which is this, I can just type in tangent of W again to get 4.44 or 40 over 9 as my final answer.